Hi, folks. Welcome back to the PagerDuty Twitch channel. I'm Mandy Walls, DevOps advocate here at PagerDuty. This isn't one of our regularly scheduled shows, but super exciting. So uh, we're going to talk with Kara here today about some scheduling things. And just as a reminder, <clears throat> some of the other stuff we have going on this week on the channel. We're here today on Tuesday. Uh, unusual. And tomorrow, uh, Jose Antonio will be back with Terraform time. That happens on Wednesdays at 4 o'clock. And we'll be back to talk more product stuff on Friday with Vivek. He's going to be talking about some stuff in mobile. That's uh, Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. If you have any other questions or stuff that you want to know about, you can check out our uh, events page at pagerd.com events. Or if you have questions about the platform or anything you're going to see today, you can check out our community forums. That's community.pagerduty.com. Sign up there, ask your questions, get your help, all that great stuff. So I'm going to turn it over to Kara. She's going to tell us all about scheduling stuff now. So many improvements. It'd be awesome. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, take it over from here. Uh, hi, I'm Kara. I'm a product manager on the scheduling team at PagerDuty. And I want to tell you all about the exciting changes we have going on and schedules, uh, schedules that we know you all love uh, with PagerDuty, getting you to respond to all your incidents and, you know, making, making responding just something that you can, you can do. Um, so with schedules, many of these changes are already across all our users in the US and Europe. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them today. Okay. So this project was around upgrading the entire experience around schedules by changing both the front end, we moved to React, and also um, making some back end changes. So I'm going to tell you briefly about um, the front end changes and then the back end changes and then kind of hint of what you're going to see in the future. So this entire project um, got started by us saying, you know what, we really need to upgrade our front end to enable us to make changes to scheduling experience down the road. So while we were looking to make these changes to schedules, we decided to look at our backlog and finally fix a lot of those issues that were pain points for our longstanding customers and really implement those into schedules. So you'll see, um, this is the edit page of a schedule and we didn't change the configuration layers and the final layers that much. But what we really worked on was the information architecture of this page. You'll notice that you still have your title to the schedule. You have a picker, a time zone picker, and this is the main uh, time zone picker for the schedule. Um, if you are the creator of the schedule, you set the time zone for the schedule. Now you'll notice your configuration layers and your override layers and your final schedule. So the first major change we did was we changed the information architecture of this page. Before you had some, some links to our knowledge base and it didn't really tell you anything about the schedule. So now you can see who's on call, who's next on call, your calendar feeds, upcoming overrides, the users on the schedule, the connected escalation policy and any teams that the schedule belongs to. Uh, another change that we made um, with overrides is we slightly changed the button over here so that you know that this is to uh, delete an override. A lot of customers had responded that they didn't know how to edit or delete overrides. So just pressing this will delete the override. Um, you can also go to this calendar view where you can see who's on call, who's on the schedule um, across a number of weeks. And you can still change this by using these arrows. Cool. So for folks who have multiple schedules in their account, they can set a different time zone for each schedule now? Because they used to inherit the time zone from the account, right? 
So they still um, inherit the time zone from the account or well, the schedule creation, but you can view this in different time zones now. Oh, excellent. So, oh, I see. Okay, cool. So you can easily change it right there at the top. Sweet. The next area we changed, if I'm going to go back to the on-call schedules page, is creating a new schedule. So this is the schedule creation page. And you'll notice now schedule names are required. Um, before we didn't have this validation and we really uh, just wanted to have this validation, making sure that users are appropriate naming, naming the schedule, schedule names because um, if you saved it and it didn't have a schedule name, you got some weird um, name, random name that didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, we slightly changed the Teams dropdown. You can uh, check for all your teams. And this is where you set the time zone for the schedule. So once you set this time zone, it remains with the schedule. And um, it, this is what it's uh, kind of set up to be. And then when you go, if you're, say, in a different location, you can view it and it will show in your local time zone. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, description right here, and then adding users. This is still the same experience. Um, now, when you inv if you're a manager and you invite your team to PagerDuty, this will take you to the users page instead of the before we had a modal um, where you added users there. But this takes us to the unified uh, users page. Um, you still have your number of rotation types: daily, weekly, and custom. And now we have a picker, a nice uh, consolidated picker. Um, it's not showing on the stream screen, but um, you get it. You can also, you can still type in the times that you want. And you can also select the day of the week that your handoff time begins. Add restrictions before was a link. We changed it to a button. And you just simply choose your specific time of the day or specific time of the week and add the restrictions. So again, you can use the new picker that's not showing up on the street screen, but <laughs> or you can type it in. And to delete it, you would use this trash icon. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to go here and start typing a schedule. Let's see, use this one. I'm going to select user here. Add a new layer here. Another call out for from our customers that a lot of them wanted to do was to be able to move and collapse these schedule layers. So now you can do this on both creation and edit. It's quite amazing. That um, is slick, yeah. Yeah. And on the back end, we did a lot of refactor work to improve the performance of the preview. So now the preview is about 50% faster. Um, so when you change, you'll see the resulting um, changes in your configurations and final schedule. And we move the save and cancel buttons so they move with the oh, they page. Float. Very nice. Yes. Beautiful, right? Yeah. And there you go, saving the resulting schedule. Now, all the all these two features, the details page, the schedule creation page, are already released. You so you should be able to see these pages today. Um, what we're currently working on right now, and I want to give you a preview, is our um, edit page functionality. So here's a schedule that I created previously. And I go in here and I want to edit the schedule. It takes me to the edit page. Um, number one thing people asked for was adding and deleting teams association from schedule. 
we've now done that. So you can associate multiple teams and you can also delete teams directly from the schedule. Oh, very nice. Yes. <laughs> very, yeah. very nice. Everyone loves a reorg, but when it comes time to like update all your pager duty, it's like no one wants a reorg. That it was so handy. Yes. Yes. Um, and then the another pain point that customers uh, labor over is our layer names. We we understand that layers aren't the most intuitive naming convention. So now you can go in here and you can call it anything that you want that makes sense for your organization. So for example, you could call this East Coast. You could call this West Coast. Um, whatever you call this rotation. Uh, let's call this central. And now you can see that, let me go and edit, I press the button too fast. Again, you can collapse these layers and move them around. And now we have branded speed bumps. You want to leave new schedule creation? It's not the browser um, overlay box. We have yeah. a pop up here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this and go back. Um, are there any questions you have, Mandy, right now related to schedules? I I think that clears up the ones that I had as we were talking. I don't see any in the chat, but if anybody out there has any questions, you can put those in the chat, and we'll. we'll uh, we'll get them answered here. Um, yeah, no, this looks this looks great. It, it's so much smoother than the old UI, and like I totally understand, folks. Like, tech debt is what tech debt is, and you got those old libraries in there, and it's time to refresh. And it, but the the difference that it makes is so much nicer for the user. So I'm excited for folks to really get in and play with this, especially folks who stumble over schedules. We get a lot of questions in the forums about how do I blah, blah, blah with the schedules. And hopefully this will, will help folks get around the things that they need to do there. There's still some weird questions that people ask about doing weird things on schedules, but for most people, this will help them out. Definitely. Yes. And most importantly, moving our um, front end and also making improvements to our back end will enable us to do more use cases. Um, not going to quite talk about them just yet, but um, I know there are a lot of things our customers have asked of us, and now we're going to be enabled to, to start making more drastic changes to schedules. Oh, and that'll be so nice. It. Excellent. We'll have to have you back on the, on the channel when there's more stuff to show off. This will, this will have a lot of, uh, downstream impact for a lot of customers that have teams in multiple places and lots of crazy things going on. So you know, that's great. Awesome. Cool. If there's any one thing that, that folks should check out first, um, is there uh, one you want them to, to look at and report back or want to hear more about or anything like that? Oh, uh, I guess another thing I neglected to mention was um, overrides, creating overrides. Oh, overrides. Um, we consolidated the view. So now that um, on the schedules list page, which is this page. So we, we, we refer to this as the schedules list page. Um, from here and both the schedule details page, you could create an override and in the schedules list page, you had this experience. So we've also updated this to flow throughout the rest of the scheduling product. So now when you go to an individual schedule and you want to create an override, it's the same experience. So we unified those. Yeah, that has been, that has been so nice. Like I want our instant commander rotations and we do a lot of shuffling around just because we're not all engineers, like people are doing all kinds of other things and like people have interviews to do or they have other things going on and we're constantly overriding those schedules. So like the mm -hmm. new interfaces for overrides has been really, really nice. So much easier. 
And if you want to override a specific person, you can click on it and it auto fills the, the actual shift information yes. and you could create the override from here. We had it before, but it was a little bit disjoint. You had to do an extra click to go yeah. in. And now it's that same experience that you have on the schedules list page. So you can either, if you want to do a time period, you click, you can either create the button, select the time period that you want, or if you want to cover for someone, just click on their name and it's autofilled. Yeah, that one's beautiful. Absolutely love it. So handy. So excellent. Well, this has been great. Like I, I'm super excited about all these things. Um, once we uh, wrap here, we'll post this on YouTube. I'm gonna link it back into the forums because we get so many questions about scheduling stuff from folks in the community forums. So I want to get all this out there so that folks know exactly what, what we've been working on and, and show all this stuff off. So this has been great. So, excellent. Right. Thank you, all Mandy, right. for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. And when the next batch of stuff comes out, you are absolutely going to have to come back and show all that stuff off as well. Um, so yeah, that'd be perfect. And if anybody out there has any questions or anything that we didn't cover today and you're not sure where to ask it, you can start in the community forums. Like I said, we're a community pagerduty.com. You can sign up there, ask whatever, we'll route your questions to the right people so that we can get you some help. In the meantime, we'll wish everyone an uneventful day. And thank you, Cara, for, for coming on the stream today. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks for watching. Make sure you never miss a stream. Follow us at PD Community and PagerDuty on twitch.tv. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you'd like to be on our stream, email us at community-team at pagerduty.com so we can feature the cool things you're doing. And don't forget, check out all of our global events on our calendar at pagerduty.com events.